character means so much. It represents, in all honesty, you know, why I'm here. On a team, when you talk about character, it basically comes down to taking who you are as an individual, uh, the things that you may like to do, your strengths and weaknesses, and, and putting some of those things aside uh, to meet your teammates uh, at a place that's outside of your comfort zone. And so it, you know, it manifests itself through helping mold and shape, you know, who, who men become. The fans are standing at Staples on it. Clippers lead by one. Barnes inbounds to Fisher in the center circle. Fisher dribbling left down the paint. A left-handed floater. A banks it in. And the Lakers will escape with a one-point win. As December wore on, the Lakers rediscovered the win column with the type of drama befitting a champion. What time is it? It's a hoop. But too often, they found themselves working very hard during a relatively soft spot in their schedule. In this game, we're not at our best, so we don't bring the focus and the intensity that is required. Nets in front, 83-82. Shot clock is down to six. Bryant for three. The Lakers will score themselves a hard fought win here in New Jersey. So some games are meant to be run in the third quarter. You don't have to win them in the fourth. Just go out and play the right kind of ball right off the bat and start a half out. You'd be all right. We're messing around second half and letting people get back in the ball game on the road. Then you got to struggle at the end of the ball game. Can't allow that to happen. Are you guys pacing yourselves through these games? Sure not trying to. Not trying to. Not trying to. Not trying to. It's. Uh, you know, we just got to muster up the energy, muster up the motivation to go out and play, you know, night in and night out. And, uh, not doing a very good job of that right now. Upon returning home, the Lakers hope to settle into a groove. But instead, their uneven play caught up with them. The Milwaukee Bucks, without their leading scorer, Brandon Jennings, come to Los Angeles and stunned the Lakers 98-79. That's really embarrassing, and the players you know, sufficiently were notified that that's not the way we play ball. On Christmas Day, the new look Miami Heat came to town and the Lakers would need to regroup against an elite opponent. This game is a big deal. It's been on the minds of players on both teams and it's a huge test for the Lakers who, let's face it, haven't had the best start to a season. They've had the easiest schedule out of any of the big teams and they haven't taken advantage of it. So tonight's their first big test. The Heat had lost only once all month and intended to make a statement that they were ready to challenge the Lakers' hold on the NBA title. They have a hell of a team, a hell of a lineup, but it's not like, you know, they put the Miami Heat team together and it was like, oh, we gotta get motivated to win a championship. We've been there. That confidence didn't mean much to Miami's big three. The Heat were the second straight team to come into Staples and set the champions back on their heels. Way down the right of the paint. Wraparound bounce for Bosch. Extending, hammers it down, and one. Dwayne Wade, right wing, catches the bounce, dribbles down to the block, sidesteps the defense, and finger rolls it in. And it's a 16-point lead. And some anxiety here at the Staples Center. The game had so much hype behind it, and we didn't come out and meet the energy that, that the game presented. It's not about wins and losses. It's about how we're going to play together. It's about making a different play that's supposed to be made by the team. The chest running up the floor, dribbles it off of his foot and into the Miami bench. We're playing bad basketball. We got blown out by the Bucks before that. To win a championship, you have to play a certain style of basketball and we weren't playing that way on Christmas. And it's over at Staples Center. For the Lakers, a second consecutive blowout loss. Any lessons from the three peak that you could use now to help you now? I mean, I'm going to kick some in practice. Losing record against winning teams, does that concern you at all at this stage? <laughs> what about this press conference makes you think I'm not concerned? <laughs> With the Lakers searching for answers, they'd have to face the top team in the West, the San Antonio Spurs, another proven champion standing in their way. Parker with a steal and lays it in! Oh, mama! The 
the Spurs handed LA another demoralizing loss, and Kobe Bryant had seen enough. He's just so competitive and so talented that the minute he, he sees us struggle a little bit, that competitive edge just takes over. And in their first game of the new year, Kobe resolved to take matters into his own hands against Memphis. And when he gets hot, it works for us sometimes. You know, other times it, it backfires. The Lakers lose by 19 to the Memphis Grizzlies. We get behind early in the third quarter on some stupid plays, and then, you know, Kobe has to screw up the, you know, game and start, you know, you know, energizing the team by going one-on-one. -on -one. It takes the rest of the guys out, and as a consequence, that didn't bring us back. Wow, a very frustrated Phil mm -hmm. Jackson. And this is the second time in a very short period of time you had Kobe calling mm -hmm. out the teammates, Phil Jackson calling out the team. Now you got Phil Jackson calling out Kobe again. I mean, they got to get their act together. The champs were determined to figure things out, but it would happen in the glare of the media spotlight. Being a Laker means living in a fishbowl, in good times and bad. You know, we have a number of situations that crop up during the course of the year that might just be uh, something that's chippy one day. You know, things like that do get magnified in a way which isn't always attractive, but it draws attention to your team. No, no turmoil at all, man. You know, we're just going through the, you know, the average growing pains that every team goes through, but, you know, ours is more magnified because we're the two-time champs. We're in L.A., and there's a lot of Hollywood things going on, a lot of drama. It could be the smallest thing happens in practice, and there's 10 of the biggest media outlets in the world talking about it the next day like it's a huge story. You know, one thing about the press and about stories is it's always, you know, Monday, you're the greatest. You know, Wednesday, you're done. You know, Friday, oh, back on top. You know, Sunday, oh, they're through. <laughs> the Lakers would also have to face up to their rabid fans who bring high expectations along with all the attention they lavish on the team. Like right before I got traded, I had a, just signed on my Twitter page and I had like 90, 90 followers and then right after the trade, it went up to almost 5,000. Lakers, Lakers! Yeah, baby. I mean, it's part of what makes it so great playing for the Lakers is all the attention and the love and the, the support you get, but it, it also makes it crazy sometimes. It's funny, there's a huge misconception about the sports fan in L.A. They think L.A. is this laid-back place. You know, sports fans are very blasé about their teams. You know, it's as cutthroat, and the expectation level is just as high as a city like New York. It really is. We could win 10 games in a row blowing teams out by 20 points, and, and we could have one game where we really stink it up, and if we do that, we'll hear it from the crowd. They'll boo us uh, on our home court, and they have done it you know, several times already this season. They've been very spoiled over the years. This is a team that's a perennial championship contender, and it doesn't matter that they've won two straight. It doesn't matter that they've been to three straight NBA Finals. They want to know, what has this team done for me this week? And if they lose two games in a row, you know, the sky is falling again in LA. You know, what's wrong with the Lakers? Coming up, the Lakers begin to recapture their championship form while starting to look ahead to their much anticipated January 30th clash with the Celtics. We've been having some pretty intense and competitive practices and it just can't help but translate to the court.